Chickens first. Uh, then, uh, yeah, I don't know what we're going to do with the Yeah, we're all in the It's going to be like very, very easy for you to do the I haven't talked to Dan yet. I'll let you know. <coughs> Wait, so are we doing um, 17 today? No, tomorrow. Okay. So let me show you something. Okay. These are the same right there. Okay. okay. Scores written and you've seen them. Yes. And all periods have to have the same columns. So. Yeah, there's some. Some of the headings right here. So probably in that last bracket of five columns, and you'll have to put in the exact same bracket on all of them. You make a multiple choice. A free response <laughs> section and a total section. Like that? Okay. And then you just write the student score. The only thing that's really key is that it be pretty um, legible, and it has to be in pencil. This is the multiple choice column. Okay, and those. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, Madeline Price is student number fourteen, so you can go to the fourteenth one. Got it? Sure. You would. So then, wait, so it is two line and three, three, three. Nope. Period two. Ooh. Okay. So it's the go. last one each time. Yeah. yeah, and those same, like, with the unit one homework, same column across all of them. You got it. That's the, the order one. that they're in my grade book. Okay. I believe I'm back in this last half. <laughs> <laughs> back, I don't care. Um, so, how many days have you missed? Um, I was gone Thursday and Friday. I did count it for one day. Um, so, you are back. You yeah. take that one by the door, corner okay. by the door. Did you take the exam last week? Yeah, last week. I did it on the retake there. Mm -hmm. We're all set. Okay. Uh, you have some homework for us. Ah. Uh, Mia, Connor. Arabia, always late. Maybe Dukes is coming today? She's not. She's not.
Okay, children. Um, and Cole, you're welcome to be in that seat if you like, but the one immediately in front of you is where I have you in my seating chart. Um, whatever you prefer. Um, we still have a minute and a half of your supposed quiet time. I'll give you a new splash. Whenever you walk in and there's like big stuff drawn on the board with numbered study goals to correspond, that is a advanced notice that this will be a hot topic in class. You can imagine I spent about a half hour drawing this in advance. So whenever you see this, usually you want to put it down or kind of get the basics, you know, at least the parts that aren't that critical. Newsflash! I just say the word, you're responsible for the definition. So if I were you, I would make this much bigger, like whole sheets of paper. And if you don't like wasting paper, use the back side of other single-sided handouts, or take some of my scratch paper. I have some to offer you that I've salvaged from other teachers' waste. Did they have zero water or not much? Literally zero. Literally zero? Like one of them had some drop. Like a, no, it was just. The bottom thing is full. Do you think there's a leak? Because. Wait, are you in the buckets? What about the white things with the green? Yeah, bottom? the white things with the green, that's what I'm filling up. They have very little. It's bad. I think there's leaks. I'm sorry, I filled them to the brim. We drink a lot, there's a lot of chickens in there. We only have three right now? Yeah. How's their food supply? Did their food last over the weekend? I don't know who we're. It's just, which one is the food there? The two metal ones? You never checked the food? I. Yeah, like one of the trash cans has a in it, like little, little poster shell pieces, and there's two metal things under the other table. Over four, and I found those. Um, I have no new injuries to report. <laughs> we did catch a couple more yellowtail uh, <coughs> on Saturday. Man, yellowtail in Santa Barbara. The the Coral Sea, 21 fishermen got 75 yellowtail yesterday on the charter boat. Anybody who fishes, that's a big old look. All right. 
Uh, <coughs> you've warmed up. 2.3 has been stamped. Anybody have any feedback for me about Friday's lecture? Uh, 2.3 has not been stamped. Oh, well. Uh, when once his face gets back, we'll ask him. Yeah. So we're going to change the period and see them drop. So all the ones that you can't find, make a pile. Then later on, when you have some blanks, you can look through your pile. And at that point, if you have some left over, you're going to move around and make it. Remember, when once his face gets back, you'll stamp your homework. I thought it would be good to move this, but I didn't use the word fall. I'm sorry. Tin break. But I can see. <sighs> All right. <laughs> I wrote check instead of check. Um, feedback on Friday's lecture. Feedback on Friday's lecture? Yes? They were college students, and they didn't really know what they were doing. Wow, much yeah. interest. What else? They didn't know what they were doing since they were just rambling aimlessly? Yeah, and then like the PowerPoint wasn't well, and like yeah. the, the computer like ran out of battery halfway through, and they kind of didn't really explain the thing that they were supposed to be explaining. They talked a lot about like social issues more than like environmental issues. At least some of them did. There was like five different ones. That's kind of what I expected. Um, I knew they were young, sort of they were prepared though. What else? Totally lame or just kind of like amateur? No, the last two people were good. What? Yeah, yeah, the last I talked about the drought and had some like interesting infographics and like statistics and stuff. Okay, okay. So not a total wave. No, for the most part it was good. It was just kind of like really long. Did it go the full two hours? <coughs> <coughs> All right. And I heard that everybody signed in on a board that was left outside. This is a pen paper on the fretboard. Yes. Um. So, anything else I got to hear about that before we get some big old nitty gritty? Yeah. When will we know our test scores? Most likely Wednesday, Thursday, whatever day I see you, Thursday in your case. Um, and that's not a promise. This would be a pretty good turnover. Like, we usually take longer than this. Yeah. And if we're going to go on a boat trip, like, when, when, when do we? TBD. Exactly. You should plan to take it on Friday. And we will discuss with Dan what the best solution is, but one option is that you will take it on Friday. Okay. On the Okay. Yeah, because we like, when do we leave? Okay. You know, like, I don't want to. I, I support the boat trips, and that's rad. But, like, I got to get my work done in advance when I'm going to go on a boat trip. So, I think the same kind of applies to students. And Dan and I kind of agree, like, we, we really see eye to eye on this that, like, the field trips are, like, huge bonus. Um, but it kind of, you still got to manage your business. I don't know what the best solution will be. There may be, a, there may be something simpler than that. Um, one thing we were thinking is just have everybody do it right when they get back. But I can tell you from many years' experience that when you come back from a three-day boat trip, you're like hacked. Mm -hmm. Like being on the water, your body's always adjusting the balance issue, you know? So even when you're asleep, your body's using like postural muscles, like who do you believe? So if you're just in the shade, not doing anything, just chilling on a boat, you burn like double the calories of being sitting right there. And so for you to take it when you get back, like plus the sunlight, plus the swimming slash diving, like you're not going to study, you're going to come back and just like. So I, I think it's way better to do it like kind of when you're fresh and Friday is kind of convenient because then it's like you're all doing it at the same time as everybody else. All right. 
please take out your 2.2 and maybe your 2.3, but definitely your 2.2. In assignment 2.2, did we define these two terms? Great. And did we get all the way up to number 13 and then stop there? I said don't worry about number 13, we'll do that one in class next time. Yeah. yeah. Good. What is? <clears throat> the difference between the calcium and the silver cycle. <clears throat> Yeah. Um, the calcium cycle doesn't produce gas, while the citrus the cycle produces gases. And if we don't say produce, anybody have another way to say that? Just barely, yeah. Gases produce. Yeah, yeah. The calcium cycle does not include a gas form. So, where <coughs> does calcium exist? On Earth. It's not in the atmosphere, so where is it? In the lithosphere slash rocks, in the hydrosphere slash water, and by the sphere living things, like you and me. We can't eat the rocks! So we get it from our diet. Where do plants get it? They don't get it from the sun. They get it from the water in the soil. So now comes the important part. Because calcium has no gas space, <coughs> it can run out easily. When you use up what's in water, you got to wait for rocks to dissolve. In other words, things that don't have a gas phase are much more likely to run out, to be a limiting factor. Are there kinds of ways where we can like speed up the calcium cycle? What? Are there ways that we can like speed up the calcium cycle? Yeah, we can grind up rocks. Yeah. yeah. So like farmers, they add calcium supplement, which is like ground up shells. No, we, we take like oyster shell and uh, whatever bivalve shells, and those are like a really sought after commodity. So, like oyster canneries, they put all the oysters in the canned oyster tin, and then all those shells get sold for agriculture. Those get ground up and thrown into the soil. So, if they're really, really small, they'll dissolve in a tiny water and add calcium to plants. Like, if you run like a post apocalypse, like Cronshaw Farm, and all you got is whatever you can figure out, like sunlight, okay, water, I got some fucking, like nitrogen, and like, like you'll run out of calcium pretty fast, and you can't stop growing. You, you gotta find some way to add that. Because it is an environmental limiting factor. There's not a lot of rocks dissolving with calcium up there. Anybody else? You guys know what I told him? That if he was running his own farm all by himself, he would run out of calcium pretty soon? All right, so today we spend all day on these two things. All day. Um, first of all, get ready for name calling. 
Emily Hayes. Yeah. What is um, biotic and abiotic? Um, abiotic is like the living parts of the ecosystem. <coughs> Actually, the other way around. So, Nico, uh, biotic is what? I'm not sure. Well, she just said it, so it's not that bad. Really? Yeah. Could you hear? Yeah. Could you hear? Could you hear her? Could you hear her? Everybody past you could hear her. That's weird. Very interesting. Kai. Yeah. So what's biotic? Uh, living, living yeah, the living stuff in the environment. That's right. That's right. Um, could you hear that? Yeah. That's good. Um. Biotic is whatever's living, and abiotic is what's not. Um, <clears throat> how about this? Is the shell of an oyster alive? No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, can you have an oyster without a shell? No. No, you yeah. can't. They don't throw out other shells. <coughs> so, is the shell... Biotic or abiotic? Abiotic. It depends. It itself is but it contributes to a greater And that's exactly the key distinction here that nothing in you is living without your life. Do you know what I mean by that? Like, it's not like there is some clear universal definition about what living really means. You're a bunch of lifeless goo. Kept together by whichever God you believe in, or nothing at all. It's so like like you're all water, right? Y'all read seventy percent water or something, seventy five percent water. So uh, like so my, my water is not alive; it's just water. Like if I take Kai and I wring out all the water, that's a bunch of dead water. But while it's in her, we call it living because she's alive. And while the seashell is attached to a living oyster, we call it biotic because the oyster is alive. But then later on, if we take that exact same shell without the oyster in and we grind it up, that's abiotic calcium carbonate sand. Everybody got this? Yeah? So I'm hoping that most of this looks familiar. How many of you have seen something like this sometime? In your previous science life. So I, I guess I'm kind of curious. Let's see. Um, this is one word here. I want to see how, how many of these words we can just fill in on our own and then we'll do a quick review. But if we can fill it all in, it goes a lot faster. Uh, what comes out of plant? What do they make in the chemistry equation? What? They make a little oxygen, although most oxygen on Earth comes from algae. And sugar. Sugar. Please look up. You're supposed to know both the name, which is glucose, a type of sugar, and you're supposed to know the, uh, the chemical equation. And what about the other half of that equation? What they take in and what comes out of CO2 and what else? What do plants also need to make sugar? And well, some that's already here. And the other part was the water. Someone said it. Which coincidentally, when you break up sugars, you give up some water. You produce water inside of you. I don't know what they call it. But no, that's not right. Well, it's hydrolysis. What? It is, but when you split out the carbon dioxide, you're left with nothing but hydrogen and oxygen. You all of those into water. All right, so please look up. What do you call the process where water and CO2 use energy from the sun to make oxygen and sugar? Yeah, everybody has seen all of this.
And what do you call the process where sugar and oxygen are used to release energy, water, and CO2? Cellular respiration. What do you call an organism that builds its own energy storage compounds? A producer or autotroph? And I don't think this was in your homework, so maybe you know and maybe you don't. What do you call an organism that eats energy storage compounds of someone else? Uh, AKA the more generic term in trophic words. Yes, heterotroph. You eat the energy storage compounds of another. Um, we have a few little facts to settle up here. Um, one fun trivia fact that all science nerds must know, almost all the oxygen in our atmosphere does not come from terrestrial planets. Because the planet has a whole lot more ocean than land mass, almost all of our atmospheric oxygen comes from the algae. From the water, not the plants on the land. <laughs> um, another little fact, you can imagine that carbon dioxide is a limiting factor or a fertilizer for the amount of plants on Earth, and you can imagine that um, sugar and uh, oxygen supply are a limiting factor or fertilizer for the amount of heterotrophs on Earth. So too many of one makes, so these numbers are usually you know, like wolves and deer, like usually going up and down in response to each other around some kind of average equilibrium. Yeah? All right. Um, is the E just for energy? Yeah, E is for energy. And whenever you see that one that looks like a, like a backward three, I use that a lot in my lectures to signify energy, and I use a lowercase e to signify uh, electrons. sunlight, right? That's where it gets its energy, right? And uh, <coughs> healthy chemistry or no? Yeah. Mostly no, but a few of you guys. Maybe if you've had biology, you know this, that um, a few elements will spontaneously click together to bond into a compound, but most of the time you have to add energy to stick together atoms. How many of you knew that? Takes a little energy to make. It. <laughs> all right. So the plant's going to all this trouble to take loose carbon or CO two, which is pretty loose, and the plant is spending a lot of energy that it gets from the sun to stick carbons together. Now, don't don't nerd out on me here. People who speak chemistry know that glucose is a hexagon, not a line. People who speak chemistry know that there are double bond and single bond. People who speak chemistry know that there's hydrogen and oxygen attached. But everybody here can see, I'm just trying to demonstrate carbon bonding, sticking together the carbons. The rest of these chemistry details are accurate, but not relevant to my demo. So don't nerd out on Okay? Why did the plant go to all this trouble? Why do this? Yeah? Because there's no sunlight during the night, so they have to have some source of energy for sugar and energy. So, 
Was the plant trying to save the carbons? Yeah, it was trying to store them. To use them later. There's a better way to say that, because it's not going to use these carbons. That's a key distinction. I know what she meant, and I know what she was thinking. And that concept of storing for later is right, and using them later is exactly right. But it's not the carbons. This is energy storage. At night, the plant goes chop, 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 chop. And the carbon just gets breathed out. Had nothing to do with carbon. Sugar is not carbon storage. Sugar is carbon bond storage, AKA energy storage. I know that sounds like a trivial distinction, like yeah, we all know what we mean. But this issue comes up a lot. And it's all about the bonds and the carbon. You know, so my students are kind of surprised by this. Plants have little mouths where they breathe. They have trillions of little, they're called stomata. They're like little tiny holes on the bottom of the leaves that open and close. Look like a breathe, yeah. What about a camp plant? Uh, it's still a stomata, doesn't it? Well, well yeah, but it's a pathway. It does at night, doesn't it? Yeah, so all plants at night do this part. Plants breathe oxygen at night and breathe out CO2. The part that a lot of my students, the, that a lot of my students often forget, and you talk to Joe Schmo in the public and everybody's like, what? Yeah, plants do this, the photosynthesis part, and no, we don't. But plants and you and me, Tim, either your lap is fascinating or your cell phoning in my class, which would be very difficult for me to accept, so just, I want to know what's so fascinating about your lap. I think you should make sure that there's nothing in those pockets and maybe like put your phone in your backpack so I don't have to fly across all these clean desks to break your neck. <clears throat> Plants do the photosynthesis part, yeah, but they do that just because the sun don't always shine and at night they're going to do the same kind of breathing that you and I do. You all realize that the only reason you have oxygen is so that you can get the CO2 out of the sugars. You don't really metabolize oxygen for anything else in your body. 98 point some percent of the oxygen that dissolves into your blood is used just to distract the carbon so they'll leave. You know, when you, when you, when you break up the sugar, those carbons want to get back together or they have something else to do. So when you break them up, you just go, okay, take the oxygen and go, and then you breathe them out. Plants use carbon for other stuff. They use carbon to build lignin and to make oils and carbs. But most of that carbon enters separately. It's not about carbon storage. Sugar is about energy storage. Plants are rad because they can do this part and they can do the respiration part. We cannot do the photosynthesis, so we get our energy from stealing the storage of another. We are heterotrophs because we take it from someone else. 